Good morning, folks. We'll be going over the severe but very short-lived geomagnetic storm yesterday. We'll see what happened in the last 24 hours on the sun and what we're looking to in the days ahead. We'll hit a great paper on the galactic current sheet as well. And we're starting with our star where there was only one M-class solar flare. Very impulsive. We still have a considerable sunspot situation. And there's a big plasma filament incoming on the south. You see it bottom left there. Well, let's start by going over what happened yesterday. In the afternoon video, we showed the solar wind impact, fast but not too dense, and the level 4 KP8 geomagnetic storm. It did not last long at all, and that's a good thing. Despite the severity of the geoelectric surges, which can be seen here reaching up to nearly scary levels, the peak surge was about 10% of what would be needed to take out major power grids, I'll isolate that frame here, by the way, the purple near South Carolina and Georgia. If this had been an X10 and equivalent CME in all the same situation, everything else being equal, the southeast and up the east coast could have had a cascade of power failures. The ground magnetic perturbations were severe but did not last long and were largely confined to the polar region. The ionosphere took the brunt of the storm effect seen in both neutral density and maximum usable frequency for communications. There was only about a 3x increase in small network outages, electrical fires, and system glitches, and this is because the storm didn't last very long, and again, the ionosphere took and continues holding the brunt of that storm energy. First, this is what it looked like back in 2003 when many transformers blew, satellites were lost, and widespread outages took place. Those peaked after 12 hours of the high storm conditions. The one yesterday didn't even last three hours and never did hit KP9. While the surface charging and single event satellite upsets were significant, there was virtually no internal charging, which means there was never going to be much damage. And as you can see on the ionospheric correction charts that it took the biggest blow and still holds that energy. It won't be trickling down into the atmosphere until those lines return to normal. Let's take a peek at the one M-class flare amidst the overall dropout of solar flaring. It came from that large southern sunspot group. It was very impulsive. And while the sunspot is still the largest and most magnetically complex region on the Earth-facing half of the sun, it is taking a little nap right now. It's heading for the limb. Right after the flare, you might have seen the plasma vacating a field connection on the north. It was gorgeous, but it did not produce a CME. Let's go to our top science news of the day, the radial spiral in the galactic disk. Of course, we're talking about the galactic current sheet here. Most notable in the paper is that they confirm it is internally driven, which observers know is from the central spinning nucleus of the galaxy and the torus and bar around it. They focus mostly on the interior reach of the galaxy and the start of the undulating spiral wave, but they do a very good job showing how it forms and has likely evolved over time. This is only showing us to about 60% of the way to where the sun is in the galaxy, but once again, the galactic current sheet is beyond detection and confirmation. They are nailing down the dynamics and sustained form physics now. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.